YouTube. Welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin. You knew that, didn't you? Hey guys, today I am here hanging out in the back with Truck Norris. And uh, I'm going to try to do something that I think needs to be done. And what I'm going to try to do is cut back on the weight of my get home bag that I keep in the back seat where tr of Truck Norris. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I have to be aware of my limitations. And since I first created the skid home bag for Truck Norris, um, I, my limitations have decreased. And uh, I'm just not physically able to do what I was able to do when I first created the skid home bag. So what I want to try to do to make it more usable for me in the event that I ever have to use it, God hopes I don't, but I want to make it lighter weight if I can. And I was watching a uh, video, I can't remember whose video it was, but they were talking about the uh, bug out bag or get home bag in relation to what your body weight is. And you don't want it to be any more than 20% of your body weight. Um, ideally, you want it to be between 10 and 15% of your body weight. And that makes sense to me. And I've actually lost a lot of weight because of the cancer and everything, too, since I made this bag. So, even though the bag weighs the same now as it did when I first put it together, I'm not as strong as I used to be. Um, so, I'm going to see what I can cut back on. So, you guys stick around and let's see if we can cut some weight off of this bag. All right, hey guys, welcome back to Urban Outdoors. We're cutting back weight on my get home bag. And this is my get home bag. And uh, we're gonna cut back weight. I wanna see first of all how much it actually weighs because I have forgotten. So I got my little scale here. And I'm gonna see what it weighs now and see how much we can trim off of this. So let's put that on here and not too bad, guys. Not too bad. Actually, this is 154.4. Now, I weigh 158, so 10% of that would be 15.8 pounds. So I'm already at 10%. That kind of surprises me because I really thought it was heavier than that. But anyway, let's still see what we can cut. I'm going to take out anything that I don't think is absolutely necessary. Now, this is not a glamour camping or a glamping car camping bag. This is a get home bag only to be used in emergency survival situations. So really what I want to cover here is the basics. Food, shelter, water, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to reach in here because I have actually forgotten what's in this bag too. Right here, I've got two different forms of light. I've got a little pin light here, and I've got a hat light. Do I need both of those? No, I don't think I do. Even though they don't weigh much individually, I'm going to get rid of... Which one do I want to get rid of? I'm going to get rid of this pin light, and I'm going to keep the hat light. So, Because I, I like to have... Uh, hands-free lighting and I usually wear a hat. I'm, I don't know why I'm not wearing a hat now. If you look at my videos, most of my videos I'm wearing a hat. Alright, let's get into the inside of the bag now. We've got a glow stick. Do we really need a glow stick? It weighs virtually nothing. Let's put that in the maybe file. Alright, binoculars. Do I really need to have binoculars in this kit? I don't think so. I'm going to keep these in my glove box, but they're going to go out of the kit. Uh, a tomahawk. This is a SOG Fusion uh, tactical tomahawk. Do I really need that in my get home bag? I think my original thought process behind this was being procuring wood if I need wood for a fire. But in all honesty, Living in the hottest state in the nation, South Carolina, we don't really get a winter. 
our winter is what most people up north would call fall. And in a survival type of situation, unless I'm wanting to start a signal fire, I don't think I'm going to need to be chopping any wood for that. There's plenty of down wood in most occasions. And I really think that probably in a survival situation, a fire might not be a good idea anyway if you don't want to be seen. You know what I'm saying? Um, so this is coming out of the bag. It's going to just go behind the seat of truck noise. We have my Bear Grylls Gerber survival knife that has a built-in ferro rod. Um, it's got the uh, sharpening stone on the back. I've got some uh, fire tinder right here. So that's kind of fire and a knife. I do think it's important to have a knife. This is going to stay. Paracord. We're going to need that for shelters, okay? So that's going to stay, all right? A folding saw. Again, I don't think I'm really in a survival get-home situation. I don't think I'm going to need this. It's a good piece of kit. Don't get me wrong. These are awesome. Good piece of equipment to have. But I don't think I need it in an emergency get-home situation. Let's see what else we got in here. A compass. That's that's staying, okay? Got to have your compass. Um, now, I've got here two pair of gloves. Why do I have two pair of gloves in one get-home bag? These gloves here were my old motorcycle gloves. I don't need these in my bug-out bag. But I do want something to protect my hands if I have to, so I have these work gloves. They're lighter weight. They're going to stay, okay? Oh, what else we got in here? This is, I'm not going to take it out, but this is a, a twig stove. Just one of the little fold-out aluminum stoves. Um, if I need to boil water, I will need something to, to you know, set up to put it on. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this. A tarp. Uh, I'm going to need shelter, most likely. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but if I do need shelter... It's good to have a tarp to use as shelter or a ground cloth. So, as far as like an extreme, mega, comfy shelter, around here most of the time, most of the year, you can sleep under the stars. Um, but it is good to have a ground cloth or to protect you from the rain, wind, etc. It's good to have a tarp. That's definitely staying. Um... Now, I've got a cook kit here. And look at it. I had a rubber band holding it together, and the rubber band has melted. That's how hot it gets here in South Carolina. And inside the cook kit, I have a little fork, a bandana. I've got a fork, spoon, knife set. And I've got some matches to get a fire started to cook something. I don't need a fork. And this set. So I'm going to take out this extra fork. It's just a little bit of weight, but hey, every little bit counts. Oh, you always need a bandana. Question is, do I need a pot like this? I'm going to put this in the maybe section. I might get rid of that and replace it with just a bottle, but we'll see. Alright, next is a fishing kit. Now, I'm thinking... I've got fishing line in here, two different things with fishing line and hooks and sinkers and jigs. But how do I know I'm even going to be anywhere where there is somewhere to fish? Remember, this is a get home bag. This is not going to be a survive for a week bag. A day, two days at the most. Am I going to go so hungry that I'm not going to be able to eat what I have in this bag? I don't think I'm going to really need to be doing any fishing. This is a pretty good weight reducer right here. So I'm taking out the fishing kit. I don't think I'm really going to need that. Um, we've got here an emergency flare. I I'm going to keep that um, in case I do need to signal somebody or anything. Now I've got here a hammock. And inside of it I have the tree straps and everything. I could use this hammock with the tarp um, in conjunction with each other to have a pretty good shelter if I need to. 
again here most of the time if you've got a tarp you can sleep on the ground but do I really need a hammock I don't know I'm gonna put that in the maybe I, I, I try not to think comfort here I'm trying to think what do I need to survive now here we have a little first aid kit I'm not gonna open it up because when I open it up everything pops but it's got bandages band-aids ointment um, painkiller um, just a general first aid. You got to have that. That's staying. Now also in Truck Norris I have my major trauma bag. That's where I keep my trauma bag. And this box right here, this is my uh, fire kit. One of my fire kits. I've got some quick fire. I've got some a flint match. A knife for a striker for a ferro rod that's also in here. I have a magnifying glass to start a, a solar fire if I need to and then I have another windproof stormproof lighter that has a mirror there for signaling and a compass on the top so I like I say it's not going to be a plan to build a fire but if I do need a fire I want to be able to build one so the fire kit is staying Alright, the next is this bag here, and honestly, I can't remember what's in here. Another first aid kit. Okay, do I need two first aid kits for a day, two day, two night, three days max? No, I don't need two first aid kits. So this one's coming out. Uh, hand warmers. Again, here in the south. I don't think I, the only time I've ever used these is when I've gone hunting. I don't think so. What I'm going to do, I'm going to keep two because it's very lightweight. But the other two are going to go in my hunting bag. And then here we have a repair. Now, this is a repair kit. And in it, you know, I've got just general things. I've got some uh, electric tape, another lighter, some super glue, needles thread um, you know that sort of thing for repairs again this isn't a long term thing I don't see me doing any sewing in a get home situation if I rip my clothes so what I mean I'm, I'm taking this out which that will allow me to take out basically this whole bag I also have zip ties duct tape super glue. I don't see me needing this guys. Um, so that repair stuff in this little bag right here that's coming out. Alright that's everything guys. That's everything that's in there. The two items that I was trying to think about. Do I need a pot? I might need to boil water. Now Oh, also, I forgot, I do have this Catadyne water filtration system. That's staying. I will need water. I've got water in the back of Truck Norris. I will remember to throw that in this bag. Um, I have nine bottles of water in there. So I got to account for that weight, too. But I do need to keep the water filter in case I do need to filter water if I run out of... Because I'll probably put maybe four bottles of water in here. Cooking kit. I do, I, I do need something to boil water in. And the size of this really, and the weight of it, it isn't much heavier than what a metal water bottle would be. Um, so I'm going to keep this. Now, I've got the tarp for shelter. Do I need the hammock? I'm thinking no. This is more of a luxury type of thing. But it would get me up off of the ground. But do I really need to be up off of the ground? But I could use this as a type of cover. I, I'm keeping it. I'm, I'm keeping it. All right. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to take a break, put all this stuff back in the bag, and then we'll weigh it. So stick around. All right, guys. Welcome back to Urban Outdoors. We're cutting weight off of this get-home bag. 
Now, remember when I first started the video, I weighed the bag. It was 15.4 pounds. Let's see how much we've cut and what that bag weighs now. We've got it cut down almost 5 pounds. Well, yeah, look at that. 10.34 pounds. So we cut basically 5 pounds off of the weight of that bag by getting rid of stuff that we don't really need in a get home situation. And that's what this is. This is a get home bag. It's not a camping bag. Now, that's way less than 10% of my body weight. But, like I say, I'm going to probably throw some bottles of water in there. So that's going to add weight. By the time I add four to six bottles of water, and now that I've cut all that stuff out, I've got plenty of room where I can add those four to six bottles of water. So that will probably get me back up closer to the 15 pounds, which is around 10% of my body weight because I weigh 158. So one item that I forgot when I was putting everything back in the bag, this was in the very bottom, and that is emergency food rations. I talked about it. I knew it was in there, but it was in the very bottom, and I overlooked it. But um, this is just apple cinnamon, uh, 2,400 calorie food bars. If you open this up, I've never tasted them before. But again, when I'm trying to survive, I'm not, I don't care if it tastes good or not. Can't be that bad. And it's 2,400 calories. We're talking for a day or two. That's enough calories to keep me going, guys. That with the water. So you never know what kind of situation you're going to be in, guys. But you want to make sure that you have the basics. I've got food with the calorie bars. I've got water, I've got shelter, okay, I've got a way to boil water. I'm going to leave it at, at, at 10.34 pounds, um, add water into that, and I, I think I'll be okay to get home. I appreciate you guys coming along. Hey, if you are one of the 1,470 subscribers at this point who have subscribed to my channel, I greatly appreciate it. I really do. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd like to cons ask you to consider doing so. And if you're one of the 50 or so people who actually watch my videos, a really big thank you. You guys are the what keeps me going. It's the 50 of you who watch my videos, not so much the 1,450 people who are subscribed. But anyway, thanks for coming along on Urban Outdoors. Until next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep it outdoors.